Jamie's story was so amazing, and uh, maybe I should have gone first because she <laughs> seems like her routine was a little bit better. But um, and uh, but yeah, now I'm trying to remember all of the the, the points I wanted to touch on. Um, Jim asked me maybe in February or January to do this. He gave me like a 20 second rundown of uh, what this was. And I thought it was awesome and I said right away that I'd, I'd love to be a part of it and I'm really proud to be here as uh, with this foundation. It's, it's incredible just, just to be here and I've had to do a little bit of research and um, maybe uh, some of you that know a little bit about it are wondering uh, my qualifications for, for <laughs> speaking to you. And after listening to Jamie's story, I'm kind of wondering myself, <laughs> my uh, qualifications. But um, I, uh, I also grew up in Illinois, and uh, from, a, from a very young age, I was just wanted to play sports, which is a little bit different from, from Jamie's story. I was totally disinterested in toys, and, and I knew that if I didn't do well in school, that would cut into my sports time, so I just, that's just what I did. I always took care of business in school so I could play sports. Um, all athletes have to overcome some things, more, some more difficult than others, obviously. Um, but the one thing that I can pass on to young athletes is, is open-mindedness or just keeping an open mind in general. And that sports came easy to me and I was good at everything but never great at anything growing up and um, luckily I didn't care which sport I was playing because I just wanted to do any of it and my goal was to become a professional athlete. Um, my parents had a very open mind in that, in that sense too because when I told them I wanted to play basketball for Bobby Knight at Indiana, Phil Jackson, Hockey, soccer, swimming, on the PGA Tour I wanted to play. <laughs> they just pointed me in the right direction, gave me the right balls or clubs or whatever, and, and said, go for it. And that was something that always stuck with me as being very important uh, as an athlete. If I would have told them at a young age that I wanted to play volleyball, being from the Midwest, they probably would have thought I needed a check up from the neck up because... <laughs> and. My wife probably thinks I still do, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, as I uh, entered high school, believe it or not, I was still pretty short and scrawny. I was maybe 5'10 going into high school. Someone was just asking how tall I was. And um, be, trying to be a basketball player and going to play for Bobby Knight, that's not a good start. <laughs> um, getting pushed around, and I just decided I had to try something else and give up basketball and baseball and and focus on uh, something else and I know Bobby Knight and Phil Jackson are probably devastated but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my friends and the coach of the volleyball team actually said come on out and see see what you can do and uh, right from the start I something clicked and I I could play I don't know why I don't know how but that's just the way it was, and um, things progressed very quickly, and I grew tall very quickly, too. In about a year, I shot up almost eight inches and another three the next year. So uh, those were some painful years, but also some <laughs> exciting years <laughs> because, uh, you know, some colleges started knocking on my door, and it was, uh, it was, uh, it was awesome that all of a sudden a kid that's never lived, left the Midwest was getting offers to go play volleyball um, and have a scholarship and and so I took some recruiting trips and um, I feel bad complaining about the cold weather of the Midwest after hearing Jamie's story <laughs> but um, I ended up in Malibu and it was it was a pretty easy <laughs> Pretty easy decision. My parents told me, think about it, go to, go to all your recruiting trips, and I did, but I never, my mind never left Malibu, and I ended up going to Pepperdine University, and it was just a, it was, it was a really easy choice, and I know my mom had a tough time leaving me as she was giving me a hug, literally with a panoramic ocean view, 
and I knew it was my childly duty that I couldn't be just have a smile on my face as they were driving away. But uh, <laughs> but I then when they left, I hadn't thought about. It. I didn't have anything to do, and school hadn't started yet. I didn't have any friends. Didn't know any of my teammates. So I just sat there looking off towards Japan somewhere, just excited, but also kind of confused about how I arrived there. And I thought about it and. You know, of all the, the plan I had of being a professional athlete my whole life. And just, if, you would, if I could have traded in to guarantee that I would have got a scholarship somewhere, I probably would have, just to play at an awesome university and have an opportunity to play a sport. It was incredible, but I, I wanted to know why. And the number one thing that stuck out was that over the years, my parents were just open-minded about whatever sport I wanted to play. And I kind of adapted that personality too, which, I mean, being able to come out here where volleyball is actually kind of cool <laughs> was a lot different, because even when I go home now, my friends are like, you're still playing volleyball. It's like, <laughs> how do you support yourself? <laughs> uh, my, my volleyball career was, was in, in, in college was awesome, and, and, and it was, it was boring and awesome at the same time because I killed it in school and um, and our team did awesome. It was just, I ended my career by graduating on a Thursday and winning a national championship on a Saturday. Had a lot of fun and then it was over and I didn't really know what to do. Um, I heard uh, rumblings about it's possible to go overseas and, and, and play pro ball in Europe and Asia, which seemed, you know, so many miles away. I'd, and I was pretty, pretty content here in, in Orange County. So, uh, so I played on the beach a little bit and I became kind of a, a beach rat, just down there playing with whatever pro players would let me play with them. Um, and my fondest memory from that summer, right, this is two weeks after I graduated, is I got a call from Karch Kirai, who was saying, uh, why don't you come down? My partner's out of town. Come down and train with me this week. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. And I thought it was for sure one of my friends that was messing <laughs> with me. Because I'd never heard him talk before. I had no idea what he sounded like. And I was, so I had to wake up at, at 5 a.m. to drive down from Malibu to Huntington. And the whole time I was thinking, man, I'm gonna kill somebody if this is a joke. <laughs> if, I get, if I get down there and Karch isn't there, or I'm just alone, that'd be horrible. But he was there, we trained, and it was, it was great. Um, but still, I didn't, I didn't really know my plan. I still wanted to play indoor volleyball. I was kind of a goofball on the beach because I didn't spend much time out there. But all of a sudden, a, a contract came across the table from an agent I had never met before. And he said, this contract is to play in South Korea. So having spent the time at Pepperdine trying to keep an open mind, um, I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to keep an open mind, is to go to South Korea and, and play in a country that I'd never been to and I didn't know much about their culture or anything. What I didn't know was that there's only one foreigner on every team in Korea. So when I got there, it was pretty lonely. <laughs> the other thing I realized was that uh, when I was watching the other foreigners in the league interact with their team, there was a lot of friction. And I didn't know if, if, if I felt that with my teammates or not. I, I just felt out of place no matter what. If you look at the pictures of my team playing on the court, I for sure looked out of place. <laughs> um, but um, I decided to make an effort to speak as much of the language as I could, to eat whatever they put on the table at least once. Uh, some of it was one and done. <laughs> and, um, and to be better friends with my teammates. And um, we ended up winning the championship that year. And, and honestly, looking back, it was because my team was, was just gelled better than all the other teams, for sure, without a doubt. They signed me again for the next year. We won again. So finally, I started to get a little bit of uh, of uh, there started to be some noise about me here and the, the national team coach asked me, okay, the players go overseas and they play their seasons in the winter professionally, but in the summer, we need you full time to come and play for, the, for Team USA. 
Easy choice, went back to the team. It was only two years away from the Olympics. And it was just, I mean, it was just an incredible opportunity um, to represent my country now, as well as make a living overseas. Um, after those two years in Korea, I decided for some reason, I had it pretty good there. Um, I, just, I was treated so well, I decided to change and, and start playing in Russia. Um, I went there apart from, from my girlfriend at the time, now wife, and it was difficult. It was lonely. Nobody was nice to me. I was a celebrity in Korea. I was wondering what, why I did that, but the level was, of volleyball was better. And I also, I needed to try new things, needed to keep an open mind in order to keep my whole philosophy going. <laughs> Um, I kept playing there for another two years. The second and third year, I changed from a team that was near Poland in a nice little city to a team that trained and played in northern Siberia. Oh. Minus 60 centigrade, um, just, just very cold. Um, the other thing we changed was that I, I realized I couldn't be apart from Val and I brought her with me. Now, maybe that's a stretch on the whole open-minded philosophy, taking a girl from San Clemente and moving her to Northern <laughs> Siberia. But she's still with me, so I guess it doesn't matter now. <laughs> um, back to uh, right before we, we finished up in Siberia was um, all of those opportunities, all of those um, the things that came in my career uh, came from me just being ready for anything and being open-minded for um, to play anywhere, to play anything, to play any position, to do what any any of the coaches asked me, and you know that led me to making the 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 roster for Beijing, and for that special month in August of. Uh, of uh, 2008, we were the best team in the world. We were not the favorites, but somehow we won. And just standing on the podium at that point, I had to think once again, I had to reflect on all of the amazing things that had to take place for a kid from Illinois, a boy from Illinois, to grow up and play volleyball and somehow win an Olympic gold medal. And all of those things led to me thinking about my, representing Illinois, representing my hometown, representing my university and all the schools I've been to, representing all the people that keep me healthy over the years, um, and representing my country. And that, to me, is just was just one of the most special, special moments ever. And um, and I continued to play and. Uh, you know, London's not, not so much of a victorious story because we got fifth place, but um, still fighting, still trying to uh, move on. If Jim can do his job a little bit better and get me, <laughs> get me healthy. Although I have a feeling it's not just his fault because, because at, uh, at my wedding, there was almost an entire table that he was sitting at where their job in my life is to keep me healthy. <laughs> so it's not just one person's job. Maybe I'm just a little fragile. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is uh, it's so amazing to be able to talk to. Obviously, there's some young athletes here and, and just glad to be a part of this uh, this foundation and this this event is awesome and um, thanks for having me